Skeletons, it's Disney Queen Skelly here, and welcome to another Fun Facts video. Um, like I said, I will be filming at night now, so my voice is lowered for the time being. If you have issues hearing me, please put in some headphones or turn up your volume, whatever is most convenient for you, because once again, I am a very, very cheap person. I, I do not have the right stuff to film for YouTube, so we're just dealing with my laptop. Anyway, enjoy these Fun Facts for Pinocchio. Now remember, for the um, longer movies, more popular movies, the fun facts will be a bit more. So hang tight and enjoy a longer fun facts video. Working models for all of Geppetto's cuckoo clocks were built as guides for the animators. Figaro was Walt Disney's favorite character. Disney pushed for the kitten to appear in the film as much as possible. After the film, Disney swapped Minnie Mouse's little cocker spaniel for, with Figaro. Originally budgeted at $500,000, the development of the film caused it to go way over budget and ultimately cost $2.5 million, one of the most expensive films produced at the time. According to sequence director Jack Kinney, Christian Rubb, the voice of Geppetto, was a Nazi sympathizer who drove the animation crew crazy with his ramblings about the glories of Adolf Hitler. They eventually got even with him when they did the live-action shooting for the scene with Geppetto fishing from inside Monstro the Whale. They put Rub on a makeshift stage where he pretended to fish while the stage was jostled by some grips who rocked the boat to give the desired effect and effectively, effectively giving Rub a ride he never forgot. Jiminy Cricket required 27 different colors. Evelyn Venable who was the physical model and voice of the Blue Fairy, was the model for the original Columbia Studios logo. During the musical number, When You Wish Upon a Star, when a spotlight is seen on Jiminy Cricket, one is able to see two books on the left of the screen, which are Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland. Walt Disney started developing these two stories for the big screen at the time of this film's release, and they would be released respectively in 1953 and 1951. The task of creating Jiminy Cricket was given to legendary Disney animator Ward Kimball, his first assignment as an animator direct, animation director. He originally designed the character to look more like a real cricket, but Walt Disney found the result too gross and demanded he be made cute. Kimball ultimately removed all the insect-like features and turned Jiminy into a little green man with an oversized head wearing a gentlemanly outfit the animator borrowed from the logo of Johnny Walker's Scotch Whiskey. Disney was pleased even though the character no longer resembled a bug. In later years, Kimball expressed unhappiness with the compromises in Jiminy's design, saying, The audience accepts him as a cricket because the other characters say he is. The first time famous voices were used to provide the voices of cartoon characters. Cliff Edwards, who voiced Jiminy Cricket, was a popular personality at the time. When Foul Fellow attempts to coax Pinocchio to go to Pleasure Island, he gives him a card with an ace of spades on it calling it his ticket. In popular myth and folklore, the Ace of Spades is referred to as the Death Card. The first animated film to win an Academy Award in a competitive category. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs 1937 had won a special Academy Award two years earlier. The theme song from Pinocchio, When You Wish Upon a Star, was ranked number seven in the 2004 American Film Institute's list of the top movie songs of all time the highest-ranking song on the list among Disney animated films. When You Wish Upon a Star went on to become the official Disney song. Foulfellow and Gideon were supposed to meet Pinocchio a third time and be caught by the police after he rejects them. The character of Jiminy Cricket wasn't introduced in to the story until the nine months into production. In an early chapter, the 1883 novel Pinocchio killed Jiminy Cricket, who was known only as Talking Cricket by throwing a mallet at him. However, the cricket shows up alive in a later chapter with the little explanation given. Amongst the nipping and tucking, there was a there was two longer scenes taken out. One included an extended scene of Pleasure Island. The other is of Geppetto telling Pinocchio of his grandfather, a pine tree. Award-winning children's book illustrator Gustav Tengren helped create the European storybook concept, conceptual design, rendering town streets and the undersea landscapes. His design sketches ultimately influenced design work for Disneyland. Although Tengren heavily influenced the overall lap look of the film, he 
he left the Disney Studios before the film was completed and received no credit. This is one of, if not the only, Disney film to feature multiple main villains. The first villain Pinocchio encounters is Honest John and his assistant Gideon. The second main villain is Stromboli. The third, although Pinocchio never meets him personally, is the coachman who took the children to Pleasure Island, and the final one is Monstro. Honest John's real name is given in promotional materials as J. Worthington Fowlfellow, but this name is never mentioned in the film itself. When Walt Disney picked up his honorary Oscar statue at Sir Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in 1937, he told the Academy Award audience about Pinocchio, which was still in production, holding their attention for a full 25 minutes. The Blue Fairy in Pinocchio, as well as the Prince in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves 1937, was creating using rotoscope technique. Lampwick is a caricature of Disney animator Fred Moore. Stromboli's wagon was a filmed model printed on spells and painted. A similar technique was used 21 years later on 101 Dalmatians, 1961. The August 1993 issue of Playboy cited 43 instances of violence and other unfavorable behavior in this film, including 23 instances of battery, 9 acts of property damage, 3 slang uses of the word jackass, 3 acts of violence involving animals, 2 shots of male nudity, and 1 instance of implied death. John Musker and Ron Clements would consider Consute on how Pinocchio 1940 achieved its underwater effects when they were in the process of developing The Little Mermaid 1989. Carlo Collotti was really Carlo Lorenzini, a journalist and ramble rouser who settled down to write children's stories. He took his pen name from the town of his mother's birth, Collotti. When he originally published Pinocchio in the form of a magazine serial, Loren Lorenzini's intention was to kill Pinocchio by having him hang himself. At the suggestion of his editor, Lorenzini added chapters 16 and 32, giving the story a happy ending and created the character of the Blue Fairy. Walt Disney wasn't happy with progress on the film, so he so halted it halfway through production to rethink the story and redesign the characters. After a year of Metaclaw's restoration, which included cleaning and removing scratches from the original negatives frame by frame, eliminating age-old distortion, the soundtrack, and revitalizing the color, the new pristine film was reissued in 1992, the first Disney feature available on DVD. In the Dutch dub, the Dutch marionettes sing the line, I bring you with me to Volendam. Volendam is a city in the Netherlands known for their traditional Dutch clothes. The film is included on Roger Ebert's Great Movies list. The first time that a film won the Academy Award for both its score and one of its songs. The next time this happened for Disney Studios was in 1964 when Mary Poppins' 1964 triumphed in both categories. Due to the war, the movie was not released in either Germany or Japan before the 1950s. In 1951, when the movie was released in Germany, it was dubbed with rather unknown actors. Only Horst Buchholz, as the voice of Lambrick, was to become famous later in years. In 1971, the movie was redubbed along with other Disney classics such as Dumbo 1941 and Bambi 1942. The original dub is now unknown in Germany. One of the favorite films of director Terry Gilliam. In the midst of production, the entire Disney animation branch was also in the process of moving from its old home on the Hyperion Avenue into premises on Burbank. It is commonly perceived that Pinocchio 1940 was the first Disney animated feature to be released in 1985 on video. In reality, that honor goes to Dumbo 1941 and 1980. There are three possible reasons for this misconception. For one, home video was in its infancy in 1980 but was taking off by 1985. Another reason was the strength of advertising campaign for Pinocchio's video debut, which was the largest campaign for a single title at the time. Finally, the Disney studio had made past statements that none of their animated films would be released on video. Nevertheless, the success of Pinocchio on video was a breakthrough moment in the, dis in the history of Walt Disney home video. On Pleasure Island, the painting Lampwick scratches his cigar on is Leonardo DiCaprio. Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. I did not say DiCaprio, I swear. In 1940, Victor Young conducted a four-record 
four record 78 RPM Decca album of the songs from Pinocchio. The album featured three songs eventually deleted from the film before its release. Jiminy Cricket, Turn On the Old Music Box, and Three Cheers for Everything. Cliff Edwards, who did the voice of Jiminy Cricket in the film, was the only actor from the movie who appeared on the album. Also featured were Julieta Navas, who sang the Ave Maria in Disney's Fantasia, 1940, the Kingsmen and the Ken Darby Singers. It is also claimed that around this time, RCA Victor released an album that was supposedly the actual film soundtrack of Pinocchio, but whether or not it really was a soundtrack was never has never been confirmed. The pool hall at Pleasure Island is in the shape of a giant eight ball with the tall Q-shaped structure standing nearby. This is a neat takeoff on the Trilon and the Perisphere at the 1939 New York World's Fair. This was originally intended to be the studio's third film after Bambi 1942. But given the long, tedious process for that film, it eventually got bumped down in favor of this one. Lux Radio Theater on the CBS network with Seal B. DeMille as the presenter broadcast a condensed version of Pinocchio on Christmas Day 1939. The program featured the performers who did the voices in the film. The animation of the sparkles produced by the Blue Fairy's Magic were designed by abstract animator Oscar Fishinger, who was working on the Toka, Tokata and Fugu sequence of Fantasia 1940. In 1883, novel Pinocchio killed Jiminy Cricket, who was known only as Talking Cricket by throwing a mallet at him. Ranked number 38 on the American Film Institute's list of the 100 most inspiring films of all time and is the only animated film to appear on the list. The film's international grosses were disastrously affected by the at break of war in Europe and Asia. The character Honest John is pictured on one of 10 USA non-denominated commemorative postage stamps celebrating Disney villains, issued as a pair of 20 stamps on the 15th of July 2017. The set was issued in a single sheet of 20 stamps. The price of each stamp on day of issue was 49 cents. The other villains depicted in this issue are the Evil Queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937, Lady Tremaine, Cinderella, 1950, The Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland, 1951, Captain Hook, Peter Pan, 1953, Maleficent, Sleeping Beauty, 1959, Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians, 1961, Ursula the Little Mermaid, 1989, Gaston, Beauty and the Beast, 1991, and Scar the Lion King, 1994. Included among the 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, edited by Steven Schneider. June 2008. Ranked number two on the American Film Institute's list of 10 greatest films in the genre animation. Carol Burnett's Favorite Disney Film. In 1937, when the studio was still in the midst of producing Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937, animator Norman Ferguson bought a translated version of Carlo Collidi's story to Walt Disney's attention. After reading the book, Walt was busting his guts with enthusiasm, said Ferguson. On its first release, this movie was billed on posters as being filmed in multi-plane technicolor. The flower that Jiminy Cricket is in when talking to Pinocchio is called a Jack in the Pulpit. Mel Blanc provided the voice of Gideon the Cat and recorded several scenes of dialogue. However, the Disney animator later decided to make Gideon a mute character a la Dopey and Snow White in the Seven Dwarves, 1937. Gideon's three hiccups plus some gurgling noises for Cleo the Fish are all that remains of Blanc's vocal performances in the film. Although Blanc provided some character voices for the Carousel of Progress animatronic stage show at Disneyland, this would be his only vocal performance in a Disney film until Who Framed Roger Rabbit, 1988. Body count, zero. <laughs> Included among the American Film Institute's 1998 list of the 400 movies nominated for the top 100 greatest American movies. According to the book Disney Animation, The Illusion of Life, Geppetto was originally drawn in early test models to resemble Doc from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937. In appearance, but had the personality of Grumpy, a crotchety old man with a heart of gold. Character actor Spencer Charters was cast in the role and his voice had the qualities that Disney animators were looking for, but initial test animation showed that Geppetto's character wasn't working as planned. He was coming across or too as 
too abrasive and unlikable. The animators recast the role with Christian Rubb providing the voice and redesigned Geppetto as a befuddled but lovable toy maker giving his face an old world look that resembled Rubb's appearance. The first Walt Disney Animation Studios film to star Thurl Ravenscroft and Candy Candido respectively. Although uncredited with this was Oliver Wallace's debut in a Disney film, but only has as a conductor and orchestrator, not a composer. He would later write the first film score for Dumbo 1941. Although Pinocchio was originally a puppet, the Blue Fairy can technically be considered his mother as she was the one who brought him to life and granted his wish on being human. Despite the title, Jiminy Cricket is actually the main character of the film while Pinocchio is the secondary character. This is because Jiminy Cricket appears at the beginning and end of the film and was more, has more screen time and lines than Pinocchio, and he is also assigned to keep an eye and teach Pinocchio right and wrong by the Blue Fairy. In the Swedish dub, one of the singers is Inga Gensel, one of Sweden's early athletic stars. Being Pinocchio's conscience, it is no coincidence that Jiminy Cricket carries the same initials as Jesus Christ. Walt Disney Animation Studios' second feature film and first one of the 1940s. Mexican actor Roberto Gomez Bolaños Chespirito heavily used his film's musical score on his show titled El Chavo del Ocho, 1971. Spoiler! Originally, the donkey Lambic was supposed to join Pinocchio and Jiminy in their escape from Pleasure Island, but is caught by the coachman's minions and he, as he is being carried away, says, go on, save yourselves, I'm a goner. Some storybook adaptations keep this scene. Spoiler. When Pinocchio is changed into a real boy, his hands are transformed from the three fingers and white-gloved Mickey Mouse hands into four-fingered, plus thumb, human hands, sans gloves. Geppetto, however, sports a full comp complement of gnarly digits throughout the film. Pinocchio spends a great amount of time underwater while looking for the whale monstro and his father. During this time, he doesn't need to hold his breath or surface for air, implying that he can breathe underwater. At the end, however, he is shown face down on the shore in a shallow puddle, appearing to have drowned, and it is said that he is dead. This is because of where he landed on the rocks, not because of the, not because of the water. Spoiler the chair Pinocchio sits on during the pool scene has a carving of a donkey, which is what the boys turn into. And those are your fun facts for Pinocchio 1940. Your next fun fact will be for Fantasia 1940. I am still not done writing those fun facts, so I have no idea when I'm getting those out to you guys. But I will get it out to you as soon as I possibly can. Thank you for watching those skeletons. I love you guys. Stay safe.